Are you one of those persons who still use a rigid cervical collar and a hard backboard for spinal stabilization of trauma patients? If so, you should listen to me because I will guide you through the new guidelines for spinal stabilization of adult trauma patients that we have made here in Denmark. So, spinal stabilization by a hard collar and backboard is a classic example of well, we have always done it like that, so it must be working. But, as many of you probably know, the procedure has been questioned in recent years due to the lack of high-quality studies supporting its effect. Because of this lack of high-quality studies, the Norwegians made some clinical guidelines on spinal stabilization, which came, which came out in 2017, where they reviewed the literature during the last 50 years. This is the link to their guideline. I will recommend you to read it if you're interested in the subject. Because this guideline inspired us in Denmark to do the same, but with the aim to minimize the over triage even more. And because we knew that we had to support very weak evidence with strong expert opinion, we had a whole national interdisciplinary working group who was sitting down and looking through the literature together. We had representatives from all the different specialties working with trauma patients in Denmark, and also from the pre-hospital personnel and from the ATLS, PHTLS, ITLS chapters. We also wanted the recommendations to find a wide acceptance when being implemented. We incorporated this guideline and went through the literature from 2015 and until now, which is October 2017. We included articles by the PICO method and assessed the evidence using the GRADE approach. Based on the literature and the group consensus process, as well as two public hearings, we came up with five main recommendations. The first one is that you should not use the rigid cervical collar anymore. The second one is that you should not use the hard backboard anymore. The third one is that you should use a vacuum mattress instead. The first three recommendations are what you would call a weak recommendation because the evidence is very sparse, but the recommendations are based on strong expert opinions. Also, the three recommendations are for stable patients. The fourth recommendation is that you should not have isolated penetrating trauma patients undergoing spinal stabilization at all. And the fifth recommendation is that you should use a clinical triaging tool to ensure good clinical practice. I know that in many countries you use the nexus of the Canadian C-spine rule, but these triaging tools are actually made for deciding if the patient should undergo x-ray or not. And far from all fractures are even unstable, so that leads to a massive over triage. So with the flowchart we have made, with the clinical triaging tool we have made, we hope that we can decrease this over triage. So this is a link to our published article, to the Danish National Clinical Guideline on Spinal Stabilization of Adult Trauma Patients. It's both consensus-based and evidence-based. And surprise, we did not find any hardcore evidence either. We screened more than 6,500 studies, and we only found four additional studies beside the studies that the Norwegians found. And that was only four smaller observational studies. But there are three things I think that are worth mentioning. The one is, there are no studies with direct evidence that spinal stabilization can reduce the incidence or degree of secondary traumatic spinal cord injury. And the second one is that spinal stabilization can reduce range of movement, but it is less much than expected, maybe only 25%. And the evidence is based from cadaver or healthy volunteer studies, meaning that it's only in cases with a perfect fit of the cervical color. And I don't know about you guys, but I have seen the cervical color in many different ways. 
sometimes even as a crown. The third thing I think is worth mentioning is that there's a growing evidence of the possible harmful effects of the classical way we had done spinal stabilization. This is a part of our flow chart. As you can see, it's a bit different than what we have done before. Now, we should not use time on spinal stabilization in patient who has a GCS score under 15. We should do what is called a time critical spinal stabilization instead. And that is because we believe in our working group that you don't know why the patient has a decreasing GCS score. Maybe we have something catastrophic going on in our head and that needs to go to the hospital very fast. Another thing that many of you probably know but that we have incorporated in our flowchart is, as you see, that isolated penetrating trauma should not undergo spinal stabilization at all. This is the second half of the flowchart, which tells you a bit about what you should do pre-hospitally and in hospital, but I will not read it out loud for you. You can go to the article to read it yourself. Thank you. I hope that you will change your practice and uh, that you got something out of this small video. Bye.